Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live. Now, today is the start of the closing weekend, as Lebo calls it, 11 days of amazing at the National Arts Festival. Ticket sales have remained consistent with last year's numbers and final sales will be revealed post the festival. Now, the good news is that in light of the current economy, the arts are proving to be extremely resilient. We crossed our reporter, Busisiwe Jimsana, in Grahamstown for an update. Busi, good morning. How are you doing? Morning, Sam. I'm good. It's a bit cold, but we're okay. How are you? Okay, Busi, we're just waiting for you to interview the Sam? man over the 11 days and tell us kind of what we can expect, what are the numbers, all of those kind of things. Take it away. It has been 10 days of fun, Sam. It has been 10 days of drama theater, dance, music, the singing, everything. But more than that, it has been a great 10 years of interacting, networking, and making sure that artists are brought together uh, to perform uh, uh, during a live audience, uh, to merge, uh, imagine artists with those of uh, uh, international artists to make sure that each one learns from the other. But I want us to go back uh, uh, in the days, in the early days when the festival was still a growing uh, told. Uh, we are joined by the festival, National Arts Festival CEO, Tony Lankenstar, who took the reins nine years ago. Nine years ago is such a long time ago. Take us back when nine years ago it was still growing, the shortfalls of those days that when you look now, you've improved. Well, uh, yes, good morning. It is a long time ago. But you know, the festival's been around for 42 years. So this event outlasts uh, any individual. Uh, it certainly has its own spirit, its own energy, its own life uh, that it just takes on from, from, from time to time. Uh, I think w when I took over, it was a very different beast. It was smaller. Um, I think we've introduced a lot of things which uh, have, have given it more focus uh, and which are really focused at particularly on uh, contributing to the economic life of this province and of the people of Grahamstown. And I think that's where its biggest success has been over the last couple of years. Uh, and we've seen that then reflected in uh, the, the, the grant we currently get from the National Department of Arts and Culture and how the festival is aligned with its broader priorities, which is saying, yes, it's a great event, it's amazing, it's lots of fun, as you say, there's plenty of things going on, but it still has a very important role to play. Uh, and it's got an important role to play in terms of the, what it does for the artists and the audiences. Uh, it's that networking thing that you spoke about, it's an opportunity for artists to meet each other, uh, and more importantly, I think it's, it's, it's important for, for audiences to see work that they wouldn't ordinarily see, and that's what a festival does. Uh, it appeals to your non-traditional uh, theatre goer, the people who don't go to the theatre in an evening, uh, and, and that's where the strength of a festival like this lies, and we can talk about that a little bit more. But uh, for the, the role that it plays in the economic life of the province, we did a, a research survey in 2013, and we're currently refreshing that uh, this year, which uh, said that the festival contributes about 340 million rand to the GDP of the province and about 90 million rand to the GDP of the city. Uh, for a small city like Grahamstown, uh, for a, a province like the Eastern Cape, which needs big flagship events like this, that's a major boon. Uh, and the big beneficiaries of that, as we see globally happening with festivals, uh, the big beneficiaries are the tourism hospitality industries. It's the people who own the, the taverns, uh, the guest houses, the car rental companies, and so on. Uh, and they, in turn, are the people who, who go on to employ lots of people. Uh, so it's a big driver of employment in a, in a province such as this. And I like to think over the last decade or so, we, we've managed to sharpen that. We've brought that focus home. Yes, we prepare the platform, this magnificent feast for the audiences to come in, uh, and feast on, uh, and, and for artists to come and perform on, but it does play that very important role as well. And contributing to the economy of the province, you'd need to make sure that these local artists, emerging artists grow. Mm -hmm. Can imagine there's a lot of them. How do you manage to make sure that there's not a lot of complaints and everyone is catered for? Yeah. Look, there are always going to be some complaints. And I think that's the beauty of a festival like this is where we have uh, two parts. We've got the Fringe Festival, uh, where anything goes. You or I could fill in a form, come along, do a performance. Uh, no one's going to tell us that we're not good enough, we're not experienced enough. Uh, we'll come and do the performance, and it's up to us to do a performance that's good enough, strong enough, uh, popular enough that it's going to attract audiences. Uh, so you see some very innovative marketing. Uh, you see some great performance 
performances from fringe artists to try and get attention from uh, the, this crowd of artists that come in. On our fringe, we have 350, 400 productions. So to stand out from the crowd, you really have to do something special. And we've seen that this year as well uh, through the Standard Bank Ovation Awards that we hand out, where we reward and acknowledge those productions which do stand out from the crowd. Uh, and we also help audiences make choices. So as a support network for, 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 uh, for emerging artists, the, the Fringe, which this year is supported by the National Lottery, so it's the National Lottery Fringe, uh, is a hugely important democratic platform that says anything goes. Then we give artists something to aspire to. We have the main program, which is the curated program selected by our panel uh, uh, on the basis of proposals that they receive. Uh, and in there, there's opportunity for artists to become the featured artists uh, or to align their work with a broader curatorial theme. Uh, and it gives you something to aspire to as an artist. So you, you can perhaps start off on the fringe and then work your way toward um, being presented on the main, which is fairly prestigious. Uh, and the main program in Grahamstown really, truly represents the best of what's going at any given moment uh, in the arts in South Africa. And you're saying this year was also one of the best years of the festival. Uh, it has been successful. Thank you so much for your time. Keep up the good work. That was the CEO of the National Arts Festival, Tony Lankenstein, telling us where they're coming from, uh, where they're going, and what they've been able to achieve in making sure that artists, local artists, and international artists are catered for. I can tell you now, Lebu, I can tell you now, Sam, it has been uh, the center, it is the center of attention uh, these past years, and it continues to be Grahamstown is buzzing. Uh, we do see that uh, there is an impact being made on the locals and on the tourist people coming to the festival. And we did speak to some of them are saying they had fun and they look forward to having more fun. For now, let's take a short break. Stay tuned to Morning Live. <laughs>